Pianist, composer, and band leader Horace Silver titled one of his later albums The Hard Bop Grand Pop. He and Art Blakey could share that title, as they are twin pillars of the genre. Horace Silver was born in Connecticut in 1928, which makes him about nine years younger than Art Blakey. Silver's father hailed from Cape Verde, which is an island archipelago off the coast of Africa. In some of his compositions, Horace incorporated and paid tribute to the Cape Verdean folk songs he heard while he was growing up. Saxophonist Stan Getz could take credit for discovering Horace Silver. Horace describes it this way. I had the house rhythm section at a club called The Sundown in Hartford. Stan Getz came up and played with us. He said he was going to call us, but we didn't take him seriously. But a couple of weeks later, he called and said he wanted the whole trio to join him. After moving to New York in the 1950s, Silver worked as a sideman with Coleman Hawkins, Lester Young, Lou Donaldson, and others, and he recorded his first album for Blue Note in 1952, which was a trio with Art Blakey on drums and Curly Russell on bass. That trio also appeared on the 1954 album A Night in Birdland, along with Lou Donaldson on tenor and Clifford Brown on trumpet. This was one of the defining albums in the emerging hard bop scene. In 1955 and 56, Horace and Art Blakey formed a group with Hank Mobley on tenor sax, Kenny Dorham or Donald Byrd on trumpet, and Doug Watkins on bass. This was a cooperative venture, as I've talked about. Art described it as a corporation. Horace was the one who suggested that they call themselves the Jazz Messengers, which was taken from Art Blakey's late 1940s bands. That lineup had recorded two albums previously as the Horace Silver Quintet, which were re-released on a single album billed as Horace Silver and the Jazz Messengers. That album contained Horace's tune, The Preacher, which is a good example of the way his writing contrasted with bebop. It has a gospel influence, which you could guess from the title, with a simple but catchy blues-based melody line. In fact, Alfred Lyon from Blue Note felt that the tune was too simple to be included on the album, but it turned out to be so popular that it gave a boost to the label. Horace said later, The preacher showed that the band could reach way back and get that old-time gut-bucket barroom feel.
1956, the Jazz Messengers split up. Hank Mobley and Doug Watkins went with Horace, joined by Donald Byrd and another Art, Art Taylor, on drums. Horace returned to calling his group the Horace Silver Quintet, while Blakey retained the name The Jazz Messengers for his subsequent groups. Horace's album Finger Poppin' featured one of his best-known and longest-lasting lineups, with Blue Mitchell on trumpet and Junior Cook on saxophone. It was released in 1959, which some people have termed the most important year in jazz because of the number of historically significant albums that were released that year.
1965, Horace recorded what became his best-known tune, Song for My Father, featuring a picture of his own father, John Tavares Silver, on the cover. Ten years later, Steely Dan borrowed, to put it charitably, the distinctive opening riff on their hit song, Ricky Don't Lose That Number. Now, I've always been surprised that this didn't result in a lawsuit, at least to the best of my knowledge, and I assume that's because Horace was not of a mind to pursue it. Had he done so and earned composer's credit, it might have resulted in a substantial financial payout. In the 1970s, Horace left Blue Note after a 28-year association and founded his own record label. He took on more ambitious writing projects, some of which included lyrics that reflected a growing interest in spiritualism and self-awareness. He also wrote for larger groups of brass and winds. He continued to tour his small groups, but for shorter periods of time, saying, I'm shooting for longevity. The road is hard on your body. I'm trying to get it all over with in four months and then recoup. As a composer, Horace said, when I wrote them, I would say to myself that I hope these at least withstand the test of time. I hope they don't sound old in 10 years or something. Well, he obviously succeeded in that, and also in his significant influence as a band leader during the development of hard bop in the 1950s and for decades to follow. Like Art Blakey's Jazz Messengers, the Horace Silver Quintet provided a training ground and a launching pad for a generation of musicians, which included Joe Henderson, Woody Shaw, the Brecker Brothers, Tom Harrell, and Dave Douglas. The final album from the group was released in 1998, and his final performance was likely around 2004 before succumbing to Alzheimer's. He died in 2014, at the age of 85. Late in life, Horace commented magnanimously on hearing other people play his music, saying, Occasionally I hear an interpretation where I say they sure messed that one up, but for the most part, I enjoy all of it. This clip features the classic 1959 group featuring the great Blue Mitchell on trumpet. Horace's piano solo is really notable. It combines simplicity and complexity, and it demonstrates a composer's approach to improvisation, building and expanding on ideas which go in unexpected directions. You can tell a lot about the strength of a composition by the degree to which the musicians seem immersed in it, and that's definitely the case here. We'd like to play for you now a uh, very low-down, bluesy type composition, uh, minor blues written in 6-8 time, this is a blues with a Latin beat added to it. We sincerely hope you enjoy a little thing we call Senor Blues. Thank you. 